Hey Terence. Hey Julius. Okay, first of all, uh, thanks for joining uh, me here with uh, Coffee and Bushroot series. No problem. You are the first of all our interviewees. Well, and uh, there's a reason for that. Then that's because you know uh, I think a lot of people have seen you in uh, a lot of videos as well, especially mm -hmm. for Body Fight Channel, right, uh, right. which you frequently appear. Well, along with me. So <laughs> and the other reason is because Terence has uh, you have been with us for about nine years now. Yes. So I think uh, you're probably one of the veterans, if not like the, 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 the person with the most experience number, uh, number of years in Bush Road right yeah, now. That's true, that's true. Yeah, so uh, I'm very excited to you know, ask you a bit about the kind of work that you do here with uh, Bush Road, mainly your current position, of course. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, you are a senior executive, senior development executive. Yes, yes that's and, right. Um, can, can you tell us a bit of the things that you have to do as uh, someone in your role? Okay, not only senior development executive, I'm also a team leader, as you know, for Body mm -hmm. Fight, mm -hmm. and our viewers also know. Mm -hmm. uh, my job comprises mostly of uh, product management, as well as marketing advisory role. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like, main part of the job is of course, products. We can't have a card game without the products going out. Mm -hmm. So most of it is scheduled around uh, product management, uh, designs, translations, and making sure, basically making sure that the product goes out on time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess as a team leader, you kind of have to manage everything and not just the product. Like yes. Developing the product is like one aspect of it. Yes. Yeah. Our development mostly centrals around localization. So okay. Japan has their main product first, mm -hmm. then we take the same product and try to localize it for the English speaking community. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, so just for the record, localize would mean to, to translate into English for the international uh, products. Yes. Yeah. So uh, could you tell us more about how you would go about localizing uh, a product? Like uh, probably take us briefly through the steps from, you know, from the very beginning mm -hmm. and to the end when, it is, when it's actually printed. Well, basically, Japan needs to have their product ready first. Mm -hmm. Then we just take the designs, the uh, translation, as in the text that they have and do translations. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, pass it to our designers. Designers put everything into what you see today as a card. Mm -hmm. Then we take the design, have it uh, sent to the factory. Factory produces everything, including the mm -hmm. packaging, such as the pillow pack, which mm -hmm. we call pillow because the, the packs look like a pillow. And although like you made it sound like very easy, like oh, from you know translating to printing, it, it, I know for a fact that it's not. You have I, done some products. Yeah, before. I know for a fact it's not because you kind of like split into three major categories. But I know it's gonna be definitely a lot more work than that. Yeah, that that was just a general description of how it is. But mm. of course, there's many many detailed steps yeah, along the way. Definitely. Yeah. So during the course of your translating and stuff, what do you what do you think is the toughest thing about? translating Japanese into English? Oh, they have a lot of uh, very Japanese-centric puns. Those are the worst things you can come across mm. if your command of the Japanese language is not as good. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean by that? Uh, they have certain like uh, puns or play on words that central around the Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. So if you were to do a localization, you try to look for something in the English language that is equivalent. Mm -hmm. You cannot just translate the entire thing as it is. Mm -hmm. If you do, a lot of um, players won't get mm -hmm. what it's trying to say mm -hmm. because they are not that uh, into the Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. So they will just be, huh, it's just another uh, flavor text. It's just another name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They might not even get it as a or it's supposed to be a joke. Yes. Because that cultural difference just doesn't get through. Yes. To the western side i suppose yes. definitely okay. so that would be the toughest thing for you as a translator oh uh, that would be one of the most challenging toughest is when there's a lot of uh, problems along the way that would cause the release date to derail mm. yeah then you have to do whatever you can to keep this production schedule back on track Some, sometimes that's one of the toughest thing is meeting deadlines mm. when everything doesn't go your way if everything is smooth, yeah, it, it's perfectly fine. Mm. 
So more that would be more the production side rather than just the translating side now. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that. So so you have a you have a lot of obstacles uh, on the translating side, and mm. then you, you also have obstacles on the production, production side. side. Yeah. So there's a lot of deadlines to 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 to, to meet. meet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's definitely tough, and uh, I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then what's the most rewarding thing about your work? Seeing players use your product in a tournament. Major or small, sometimes you just go to a card shop and people are playing with the cards and you say, hey, that's the latest release. Then you'll be like, oh, are they using, are they having fun with it? Okay. Like, if they are really making a ruckus and just generally having fun, that, that's the most rewarding thing for a developer. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I, I suppose, you know, when you go and visit card shops or maybe in tournaments and you, you see that card on the table and you're like, then, then it brings you back, you know, to the memories of you translating that, you know, <laughs> maybe in the office. And, oh, I have problems with this, uh, this certain pun, this certain joke. Right. Or that card was changed last minute. We had to make all the arrangements just to make it proper by the time the product is released. Mm. They go like, oh, I remember that one. All right, right, all right. right. So, uh, okay, maybe you can tell us what's your most memorable product that you have done so far. Like, probably the one that maybe gave you the most trouble or maybe you had the most fun. Limited only to Buddy Bite? Or um, it could be anything. You, know? mm. you have nine years worth of experience here with Bush Road, and I understand mm. you do other titles as well, such right. as Luck and Logic, and I think a bit of Vice Shorts as well. In fact, I've actually handled every single English uh, card game localization up to now. Oh. If I didn't start it, I would have participated in it at a certain point in time. Okay. In fact, most of the English card games, I, I think I was one of the starting members when they were doing the localization. Oh, so like the, 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 the first English product for every game, like probably BT01 or TD, yeah. the very first series, TD01, right. BT01, yes. that would be all you. Uh, yes, except wow. for Luck and Logic. Luck and Logic, I was already team leader by the time that started. So I only checked. I did not uh, actually do the translations or the uh, localization part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But other than that, yes, I started most of the English card games, uh, Vice Shorts, Vanguard, Buddy Fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And uh, after that, once... Uh, after starting the, the localization uh, work and maybe maybe the production work, uh, once there are new staff on board, I will train them and then mm. uh, let them control the uh, production. Then I'll move on to other projects, of course. Mm. All right, that's great. Right. Okay. So uh, along the way, as you can see, there's a lot of products that mm -hmm. I've covered in these past nine years or so. Mm -hmm. So... You want me to narrow it down to one? Uh, I mean, you can give us a few if you have. Like, this, whatever comes to mind would be your most memorable product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the most memorable one, I think it's a bit uh, out of the ordinary. It's because it was uh, English by Schwartz, the Attack on Titan set. Okay. It was a big challenge for the English uh, card game because the English version released one month before the Japanese version. Okay, that, uh, that's going to be rare, right? Because usually, usually yes. it's going to be Japan first and maybe like two weeks or one month later then we, English, uh, we release the English version. If at all, because uh, by Shorts, we don't have all the titles in the English version. Sometimes it's uh, due to copyright, sometimes it's due to the popularity of the set. Uh, Some sets don't, will not sell as well outside of Japan because it's not as well known actually, or as popular. Yeah. But uh, Attack on Titan, that's a worldwide renowned title. Yeah. So at that time, uh, I was given the instructions, English version is going to release one month before the Japanese version. Okay. And it's something that we have never done before for the English version. Okay, I, I would say any, that's memorable. Any English version. <laughs> so it's like, what? Really? Was the first reaction. Okay. Yeah. Because I wouldn't say it's impossible, but the logistics of it was that Japan will need to finalize every single data before I can work on any of the components. Yes. So the biggest risk of uh, doing something before the Japanese version is that 
once you have finalized all the data, the factory is printing, if Japan makes any changes to the Japanese set, we will not get it in the English version. Yeah. yeah. It's the biggest risk of all. Okay. So, so can I ask why did they do something like this? You know, out, so, so, something so out of the norm. Like, what was the reason behind that? From what I heard was that Attack on Titan was really popular overseas. Mm -hmm. So they decided, let, let's do something phenomenal for this set. The English version will come out before the Japanese one. Okay, so simply it was, it was just for the fans. Like, oh, okay, yes. it's super popular in the Western world as well. Then yes. Just get this out earlier than the Japanese version. Yes, and it's something the fans can brag about in the English community. Yeah. Hey, we got ours before the Japanese set. Yeah, because yeah, usually it's the other way around. Yes, so okay. even at this time, sometimes the uh, simultaneous release well, is going to be quite difficult. Exactly. Because of uh, Japan's very short uh, lead time for uh, data, for designs. Overseas, we have a lot of uh, logistics issues, uh, considerations, before we can actually send data for print, finalize all the data. So it's going to be a lot tougher. Okay. So <laughs> the, the schedule for this uh, English uh, Attack on Titan, how, how bad was it? Like how, how, how much of a rush were you in no, due to this sudden okay. arrangement? I can only say that uh, for this particular set, it was a good thing at that time I was living in Tokyo, Japan and working in the main office. Because at any point in time, I had to get up from my seat, run to the vice shorts team, the Japanese team in the office, and just discuss every single detail. At that time, I think we were one floor apart. If I remember correctly, we were one floor apart. We were definitely on different floors. My, my office was, I think, one floor higher than the Japanese vice shorts team. So okay. at any point I needed anything, it would be a leave my seat, run, 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 run all the way down, I end up all the details, get back to... No, somebody out there will say, why don't you just call down and say, no, some, some things you need to iron out in detail mm. and have all the details straight. Yeah. Because any single mistake there would cause the entire set to be different from the Japanese one. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's one thing, uh, some, so that's something that's manageable only because you, you were working in Japan at mm -hmm. the time. Yes. Oh, wow. It is going to be very difficult, very challenging if we were to attempt the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And while well, since you mentioned it, uh, I understand you worked in Japan for a number of years. How many years was that? Five or six. I five, think. six years. Yeah. So five, six years of your years working in, uh, five, six years out of nine years working in Bushiro, five, six, Five, six years was in Japan. Was in Tokyo, Japan, yeah. Tokyo. Wow, wow. Working out of the main office. Okay, so uh, I'm a little bit curious. Like, what's the cultural working difference you know, in Japan and then in Singapore? Like, what's the main difference do you, do you see? It's more of the working culture, I think, and mostly because uh, Japanese tend to be very polite. So the place is mostly quiet. It's a lot more quiet than any other office than I've seen so far. So, uh, and people tend to like to finish their work before they leave the office. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> some, some employees tend to leave like 8, 9 p.m. at night just because they finish their work and then they prepare for the next day's work. Okay. So, it's slightly different from overseas where there are certain companies that, of course, uh, once it's time to knock off, you go home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 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 in Japan, you know, you, a lot of people, they actually like stay up later than usual. Yes, they normally stay back later just to finish up their work, which is not a bad thing, but you know, sometimes you need time for a family. Mm -hmm. I, I guess you kind of like have to balance. Yeah. You know, some days you might have to stay because you have to stay, but you know, maybe other days you can take it easier and then just take it easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, just to dispel some um, rumors out there, know that there's uh, actually a rumor out there that says mm -hmm. that Japanese companies, you don't leave uh, earlier than your boss. Mm -hmm. No, no, that, 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 that's just a okay. rumor. Probably some, from a very long time ago. It maybe. might have been a practice maybe yeah. long, long ago, but uh, nowadays not so much. Okay. I mean, the boss sometimes leaves earlier than most mm -hmm. of the staff because sometimes they have uh, maybe business dinners, business mm -hmm. appointments, they need to talk to other companies or have their own appointments. So, yeah, yeah. it's definitely not that true. Do you have any uh, kind of tips or advice for people who might want to do translating 
uh, for a job. Like they, maybe they want to be a translator as well. Maybe they mm-hmm. hope to be working for Pusher one day. You know, I, I do you have any advice for the young ones out there? <laughs> young ones, yeah. If, if it, they are young ones, they are still a bit away. But uh, well, for tips, all I can say is uh, first you must get your Japanese language up to par. Mm-hmm. For that, you probably have to listen to music, watch shows. If you can try practicing. If you're in a class, grab your classmates and just practice mm-hmm. whatever language it is that you want to practice. Uh, getting better at it is first priority. Mm-hmm. Then after that, uh, practice a lot, I guess. Listening to music, watching shows, reading books, or even if you're starting out in Japanese, reading manga. Mm-hmm. That's the, one of the easiest ways. Go for the lower age yeah. mangas like uh, Buddy Fight. We have Core Core Comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Japanese magazine. Just get a copy and just try to read. Yeah, whatever's in there. Uh, yeah. Then after that, JLPT, uh, the mm-hmm. Japanese language proficiency test, pass. Or if you can go all the way to level one, that, mm-hmm. that at least shows your employer that you, you have, have the skills. Yeah, yeah. I w- I wouldn't say it's absolutely necessary because mm. as with any language, you know, just just being able to speak it, write it, uh, write it, you know, it shows that you know the language, yeah. and then from people who know the language will know what level of proficiency uh, proficiency you are at. Yeah, but so it, I I guess it's just good to really just you know show it. I I can do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just uh, documentation that you yeah. know. Uh. Yeah, because from what I know, I think Terence, you don't have any JLPT at all. No, no. no. Yeah. And yet, you know, everyone who needs help with Japanese in the offices, they just go to you. Yeah, because I, if you stay in the country long enough, it yeah. becomes natural. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, so you, it's, I wouldn't say, you know, we wouldn't say JLPT is absolutely necessary, yes, but, but it's, it's just good, good to have. have. Yes, it's not just to show because I, I think people, you know, that's a kind of like official uh, verification that, you know, mm. no, you can do, you have uh, proficiency in this language. Yes. Also depends on your employer. If your employer is really requires a proof that you do know yeah. the language, yeah. But uh, there are companies out there who actually just test your proficiency mm-hmm. during the interviews. Yeah. Right. So it it again depends on the company who's going to hire you. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So Terence tips uh, for everyone is uh, just <laughs> immerse yourself in the language, you know, in Japanese language. If you want to translate Japanese for right. a living. Or yeah. if you want to translate other languages, just yeah, yeah same thing. Learn, um, adapt, be really good at it. Mm-hmm. At least a normal conversation. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose the kind of uh, uh, things you're translating for matters as well. Like you, you can be interested in Japanese language, mm-hmm. but you also have to be interested in, let's say, the anime and manga culture. If that's what you want, want to, to translate, do. yeah, because. Yeah, if not, you might not get the, the puns or, or the references. A lot of con- uh, references and connotations that come with a lot of different words. Right, right. Yeah. So I suppose you know, if you want to be working in the industry, I guess you have to be interested in that industry as well. It's definitely a plus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because if not, a lot of things you just wouldn't get. Yeah, it just goes over your head. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you so much for sharing all your insights here with us. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's, because as one of the longest standing employee of Push Road, you know, you definitely have a lot of valuable experience to share with us. So thank you so much for the interview today. And uh, I think yeah, we'll sure. just, yeah, I think that's, that's all we have for today. Yeah. So thank you so much. Great thank being you. here. Yeah, thank you.